What's up, world? It's the Von Go Podcast, man, brought to you by your boy Javon Graves, a.k.a. Von Graves, I guess. It's kind of redundant. Anyways, uh, me and my wife were actually having a conversation. You know, it's been a really, really rough week, uh, especially with the baby and everything. And um, we started having a really good discussion, man. We call it a, like a check-in just to kind of do a, a heat check on just seeing how we feeling, how we feeling about each other. Uh, kind of get our stresses off of our chest, that sort of thing. But the conversation actually got so intense and really interesting. And so she had a great idea to go ahead and turn the microphone on and actually have the conversation live. And so uh, that's what this is. So I'm about to switch it over, um, import the audio so that y'all can hear our discussion. Um, a certain point in it, we started realizing that we are you know, we need to break the fourth wall to actually talk to you guys as well. So um, I hope you like it. You know, uh, it was kind of a personal moment that turned into a learning experience for all of us. So the topic was marriage, you know, and I feel like, you know, we have a purpose with our marriage. And I feel like, you know, again, there are other marriages out there. If my mom and my dad didn't know us. Mm -hmm when they were going through their go through, I think my mom could have benefited from subscribing to our channel and mm -hmm. watching us. You know, she relates to you because y'all both literally are women of God. Mm -hmm. Both had children at 19 years old. Right. Both got husbands that look like each other because my dad, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? So it's kind of like a paradox, but regardless though, um, she would have related to that. And I think that it's not just her, but it's a lot of women out there. And our audience has expanded so much because of the decision that we made to commit to parenthood, commit to marriage. And it, it's inspiring to people. And they're telling us that every day. Mm -hmm. And so whenever we feel any sort of like doubt about what, what we're doing and why we're in this situation and stuff, mm -hmm. always just referring back to the confirmation that yeah. we're that we're yeah. receiving not just from people right. but also from god through people mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying through through the different people and it's teenagers it's middle-aged people you know it's, it's older people and i'm all about purpose i'm big on i love progress i love growth i love building mm -hmm. things that's that's my thing that's the first thing i told you when we met was let's build right and um, and I feel like that's exactly what it is that we're doing is we're building. God is bringing provision, resources in order for us to do that same thing. You know, I feel like the vision that I have for us is, is literally unfolding. Love is a decision. My husband and I sat down just to kind of check in with each other. I think this is our first check in since we've had our daughter. It's been about a month and check ins are important in your marriage. Love is a decision and sometimes we associate love with a feeling and though it's a feeling, it's also a decision. Um, you're not always going to feel like loving your husband or loving your wife, but it's a decision and it's necessary for any sustainable relationship. Mm -hmm. So we sat down and we said, where can I love you better? How can I love you better? How can I support you more? Because we're frustrated. We are exhausted. Being new parents is hard. The reality of it is it's it's very, very challenging. And it can put a strain on a marriage if you allow it to. But love is a decision. And we decided to sit down and have the hard conversations. And I think the hard conversations are really, really, really important. Because I think it pulls out problems that would have never been pulled out if you wouldn't have had that conversation. So mm -hmm. conflict necessarily isn't a bad thing. I think conflict, it's healthy tension, healthy yeah. tension. That's what uh, I remember a mentor like years ago told me that um, he was building a company and he would get into it with his employees. Mm -hmm. And I thought conflict and drama was bad, especially mm -hmm. for business. You know, it's bad for business. But he explained to me that healthy tension is important and necessary for mm -hmm. any sort of growth in any sort of environment or right. any sort of business. Without that, you have a lot of people that are suppressing how they feel right. and they're putting it under the rug and then it blows up later. Yep. And it's something that could have been prevented if yep. they had the space and the environment to um, express themselves, even if it was conflict. A lot of times, too, especially men, you can fight with your brother mm -hmm. or your best friend mm -hmm. over some stuff that you've been holding in or whatever, yep. and it's actually drifting y'all apart. But after that fight y'all have, y'all are even closer together, together because right. now y'all realize, okay, now we're on the same page and I know where that person is coming from. Exactly. I, I just think that, you know, it's important too to have a mission statement. I think our friends, Kirsten and uh, Solomon taught us that. Yes. Um, and we really need to get back to our blueprint. And what actually is funny is, so 
we're moving and I was going through packing yesterday. I was packing up the bathroom and I found the Graves playbook. This is a playbook we made probably in November of 2021 and it was how we were going to tackle our marriage this is when we were engaged how we plan to handle conflict how we plan to handle our finances how we plan to handle all of these things that come up in a marriage that sometimes you know separate people and put a lot of tension on a marriage so it just brought me back and sometimes you need that thing to just ground you and bring you back to your foundation and i think that really just made me stop for a second and kind of do a mental check in with myself and say, okay, what am I actually executing on this playbook? What does my husband need to execute better on this playbook? Right. And having expectations and having hard conversations with your husband is is necessary. Mm -hmm. And it's not you nagging. It's really you wanting the best for not only your marriage, but your family. Because when I feel loved, I can be the best mother. When Javon feels loved, mm -hmm. he can be the best husband. So it just really made me do this mental check-in. And it's crazy that now we're having this conversation of just catching up with each other and, and doing a how am I doing type of conversation. And it just feels good to have these conversations because they're necessary. And it mm -hmm. actually helps to push your marriage to a healthier state. Having a partner, it's like... You know, you have two batteries that charge each other. Right. And sometimes in charging the other one, your battery can be depleted. But the beauty mm. of it is, though, that that battery now has the juice to be able to charge you back up when you That's need to good. charge. A, a example of that is like, you know, for the past couple of days, I want M Maya to be the best mother that she can be. Mm -hmm. And I started noticing that her frustration and... um almost like, you know, an emotional detachment because of her exhaustion and mm -hmm. what was kicking in. And so, you know, for me, I'm like, okay, you know, the best version of Maya is a rested Maya. So what I started doing was taking the baby out of the room when she starts fussing at night. And, you know, before we would just be in the room together. And it's like, it really is counterproductive because you're trying to let the other person rest, but the baby's crying in the mm -hmm. same room that the person is trying to sleep in. Right. So it really doesn't make sense to just be in the same room trying to watch the baby. You know what I'm saying? What difference do it make if both people are in the same room anyway? Right. So for me, I'm like, all right, well, let me take her to the living room and I'm going to watch her out there and then I'll bring her in when it's Maya's shift. That way Maya has a full, peaceful night of sleep. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it, it worked, you know, for a couple of days. But what I noticed today is that I woke up I, and I'm drained because I really haven't slept. Because I'm trying to refill Maya's battery, mm -hmm. my battery is now drained. Right. And, you know, and, she, and Maya woke up this morning and she was singing and, you know, and she was giggly and she was juiced up. You know, she had a lot of energy and stuff. And I really couldn't match that. You know, I, mm -hmm. I wasn't feeling it at all. I was frustrated. Um, and, you know, when you like, when somebody else is like, Happier than you, <laughs> yeah. You not in, you not feeling it, so you just like this person over here. Like, what's she so happy about? Right. You know. So I'm, I'm getting mad at her because she over here going in, and, oh, you know, my yeah, Andy. playing worship songs and playing with the baby and stuff. And I'm like, man, like I'm not, I'm not on that. And then you know, she asked the question, and she said, "Why don't we do Bible studies anymore?" And at first, you know, it really bothered me because I'm like, the the demand felt so high. It's like when do we when will we have time to do that? It, are we supposed to do that what when we were packing up the house this week? Um when we were editing videos, was it supposed to be when when I'm supposed to give her a bath or change diapers or when I check emails and stuff. And so I feel like there's so much demand mm -hmm. that it's like when how dare you ask me when I should when I could do more? But mm -hmm. then, but then I had to go for a walk with Lulu this morning, and I was thinking about it, and I'm like, you know, I have to figure out how where to put the priority because that the Bible thing and the Word of God shouldn't be mm -hmm. the thing I'm trying to squeeze in right. to my day, <clears throat> right? Um, but where does it fit? Because because does it do I neglect the baby? For that too, you know what I'm saying? That also isn't being good stewardship and that's not mm. being a good father, you know what I'm saying, to do that. So so that can't be the answer. 
we still also have work to do, you know? And what I used to do was get up before everybody else would mm-hmm. so that I can do that stuff. Well, now I'm not, I'm not sleeping. Mm-hmm. And so it's, I'm up with her and I'm watching her constantly. So maybe it's at that time that I, I should be doing my Bible studies and stuff. But it's also very hard for me to get into anything if I'm tired. Mm-hmm. If I'm exhausted, I'm not feeling nothing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not feeling a Bible study. I'm not feeling worship. And not- I think I think the biggest thing for me that I'm learning in this season is with my relationship with God, like you said, it's not something I'm going to schedule in. It's something that's a priority for me. It's not something that's about a feeling. It's about a necessity. What I've seen God do in our life is unexplainable and he deserves the first of my everything Mm -hmm. and that's what and it's hard because you do have so many demands as a husband as a father as a businessman there's so many demands coming at you and i think the biggest thing with god is he's saying i've put those demands on your life i have allowed for your business to grow i've allowed for you to have a wife i've allowed for you to have a daughter these are things i've given to you and i need your first you know god Mm -hmm. has provided your busy schedule Mm -hmm. and he expects that before that schedule starts come and just talk with me Mm -hmm. i think sometimes we put so much like pressure and on our prayer and it's like we almost feel but in, in, in the garden of eden which is the only time that that god thought that things were good but after that it was all just redemption everything was had a re re repent Mm -hmm. redeem redeemer uh revival re 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 which just means that we're going back to something that was already there and so in the garden of eden adam it never says anywhere that he prayed had to pray at this certain time of the day or anything like that what it was was he walked with god so Mm -hmm. so it was it was his lifestyle god was always with him Mm -hmm. as a believer and as someone you know who does follow christ you you are walking in the holy spirit and everything that you do and so with god putting all this stuff on you Your job is to steward and be Mm -hmm. faithful to what it was that he put on your plate Mm -hmm. and keep him in everything, not Mm -hmm. just in that part of your day, Mm -hmm. but throughout your day. Right. He should be in your parent, the way you parent your child, your parenthood. He should be in your in your marriage. He should be in your business. How how you go about doing things. Do you snap on your wife or are you very patient with her and your child? Um. And, and showing them the character of God and mm-hmm. being in the likeness of God in everything that you do. You know what I mean? And I think with that, God almost, can, he can honor that just as much as the person who doesn't do any of that stuff, but he gonna make sure he pray at this time and at this time of day. But then after, outside of those prayers, He's going to go do I think I think scheduling prayers is not to get confused with walking with God. I think both are just as important that you should have time where it's just God, where it's not you and God's in the back of your mind, but you're focusing on your work. I think having those times of complete solitude with God are just as important as carrying and walking out your day with God. Mm. Um, so not saying to schedule your prayers on this mundane prayer and you're just saying, Father, thank you for today. Amen. That's not what I mean. Mm-hmm. What I found is when I completely isolate myself from my day-to-day life and take time with God, that's when I hear God the clearest. That's when I can really get into the spirit the most because there's not distractions. I, Sometimes God doesn't want distractions. Right. And and I think I think my point in that is that the prayer is for us, mm-hmm. not for God. God doesn't need mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. from anybody. He's self-sustainable. And so when we pray, that's to keep ourselves sane. That's right. to keep his yeah. hand on us. That's the that's to get his counsel for wisdom for how to handle this situation that's so stressful and how to make more time. And God finds a way to make more time in your day somehow. You know what I mean? It's for it's for you as a as a believer though, more so for him. You're not doing him any favors right. by doing that. You know what I'm saying? But he can give you favor and do you favors by coming to him and walking with him and stuff and so we're not disagreeing i think we're saying the same thing i think it's a matter of both meshing of both is 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 walking in his likeness having his character and at the same time making sure that you are making time with him so that you even know what that person is and who that person is that you're trying to be like if you don't know god how can you walk in his likeness and have Mm -hmm. his character if i don't know him so coming to him and having that relationship with him allows you to now become more like him because you do have that close uh, close connection. 
for us though um we're just in the most high stressful stage mm -hmm. of parenthood because it's still we're only a month in you know every two hours even if we are to be romantic and focus on each other for a second the baby's gonna cry that reminds us this is not just us two it's us three it's she's right here you know what i mean and i she, think the biggest thing in this season is just like adapting and navigating new seasons this is something new we've never been parents before mm -hmm. and having grace not only for ourselves but for each other will carry us a long way mm -hmm. in this season mm -hmm. and what i've learned about god is before he gives you the ultimate test he prepares you he has prepared you to have patience he has prepared me to nurture. He has prepared you to sacrifice. He has prepared me to mm. love unconditionally. He has prepared us for the test. And now it's time to implement everything God has taught us, everything God has prepared us in previous seasons into this hard test. It's a hard ex examination we're going through. Mm. It is the ACT of life. It is the SAT of our marriage. Right. It's hard. Right. But know that God has put in you exactly what you need. And sometimes you have to pull from that. And I think that's what I found when I saw that um, Grace playbook is, you know what? God has prepared us for this. God has prepped us for this. God has put it in us. So therefore, we're capable. And when you can pull from a strength that's not your own, there is peace. There is capability like no other there is a strength like no other so knowing that we're not doing this on our own you're not doing this on your own not only is it me and you but we also have this inner strength and power from the holy spirit that will carry us further than we can ever carry ourselves right pulling from that when you're exhausted and saying god i need rest then coming to your wife and saying can you please take the baby and having those two right. things instead of just one or the other right. creates a really healthy environment where you do feel capable that you can do it and even just this talk you know it's definitely been therapeutic mm -hmm. um and helped out a lot and so um it was actually maya's idea because we were just talking about this anyway maya's idea was go get the microphone set it up so that other people can also um, benefit from this conversation mm -hmm. that we're having too. So where's the claps? <laughs> so shout out to Maya for that. You know yes, what I'm saying? And um, of course. And yeah, you know. So I think you know this. This podcast didn't really have a. It was really random and spontaneous. <laughs> but I think it's actually doper that way. Mm -hmm. um, that's how my mind works anyway. I'm right. not. I'm not good at. <laughs> you know having all this structure. Yeah, I'm kind of ADHD. So. <laughs> I got to, you know, you got to catch me in, when I'm in it, you know? And yeah. so, uh, but I think that is going to be the the uh, style. common style. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the style of, of this podcast. And so I hope y'all like it. Um, make Thank sure y'all leave comments. Um, yeah. Let us know what more stuff y'all want us to talk about. Yeah. Um, any interviews that y'all mm -hmm. think, you know, we should have. Uh, I want to get, you know, our pastor um, on on this one, yes. um, you know, before the end of the month and stuff. And so and then we'll, we'll add a visual aspect to it, too, once we get into the house. Um, so, yeah, you know, so I appreciate y'all. And thank you, know, you for thank having you for me tuning today. in. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Maya, for joining the show. And uh, see y'all next time on the Bongo podcast. And that's it, y'all, uh, from my show this Monday morning. Um, I hope y'all have a great rest of your week. I hope y'all got something out of this conversation. I can't wait to speak to you again. I love every single one of y'all. I'm praying for y'all marriages. I'm praying for y'all children. Uh, we praying for all that, man. Until next time. I I oh.